What's up everybody? In this video, I am going to show you how to install the Windows Insider Preview of the ARM64 version of Windows. I'm going to be doing this on my M1 based Mac Mini. So that's an ARM processor and I'm going to be using Parallels for Mac. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to this URL here. I'll put it in the show notes or you can just search for Windows 10 ARM64 Preview and you'll eventually get here. You're going to want to download whatever the latest build number is. There may be a newer version by the time you're watching this video. This is the inside the preview of Windows 10 for ARM64 clients. Once you have got that downloaded, you are going to want to go ahead and open up Parallels for Desktop. If like me here, you are going to see this for an M1 Mac Mini and it's going to say, you know, you need to use the ARM preview versions, right? I'm just going to hit continue and then I'm going to say, okay, I want to create a new machine. I'm going to hit continue again. I'm going to tell it to find it automatically. It's going to find that image that I've downloaded. There it is right there. And it says it's in the downloads folder. I'm going to use that one and hit continue. Now you're going to get some options here and those options there, basically what it does is it sets some settings for you, but you can change all of these later on. For me, I use it for software development primarily. So I'm just going to say here, click software development, hit continue. It's going to ask me to give it a name and where it's going to save the virtual machine. I am also going to go ahead and I do this every time and I recommend you do as well and click the customize settings before installation. I'm going to click create. You can see the Windows ARM64 logo there. It's going to go ahead and do a couple of things for us. All right. And as that completes, it's actually pretty fast. Now, because I checked the box to say I want to configure the machine, it's going to pop up this dialog for me here. I'm going to go through these options very quickly. It gives me a chance to set the name again and the description and some other options, but I'm, I'm going to leave those options as they are there. I'm going to go to the options tab. The ones that I like to look for is to just double check some of these settings. These are all going to be fine. Start automatically. I never want that to happen. Startup view is the same as the last one. When I shut down the Mac, I went to suspend. Same for Windows there. Optimization. You can see that on this machine here, this is an M1 Mac mini with 16 gig of RAM. I'm going to leave it at no limit. Sharing. What I like to do is I like to isolate my Mac and my VMs from each other, because that's kind of part of the reason why I'm doing this. So there's something happens with the VM. I don't have to worry about it affecting the Mac. So I'm actually going to change these to share folders to none. And I'm going to say yes. It's going to say, oh, just, you know, I need to turn this off here. Yeah, I want you to turn that off as well. I don't want to share the cloud folders and I don't want to map the Mac volumes to Windows either. Just take a quick look at the advanced settings. These are fine. We'll leave those alone. We're going to go to share windows here. I do not want to access windows folders from the Mac. So I'm going to turn that off as well. Take a look at the advanced settings. That's fine. I'm going to go to applications. Again, I like to isolate. So I'm going to turn off share windows applications with the Mac. And yes, I'm sure. Share windows notifications. Sorry, show windows notifications area in the Mac menu bar. I don't need that. Share Mac applications with windows. Don't want to do that either. Disable full screen. That's fine. Just going to leave it as it is. Same with picture in picture, web and email. You have some options here for the Safari plugins. I'm just going to leave those alone. Uh, maintenance is an option that'll run some of the automatic maintenance stuff for you. It's entirely up to you whether you want to turn that on or not. You can change all of these later on, by the way. On more options, yeah, I am going to sync from the Mac. The time I will share the Mac clipboard. Uh, because it's convenient to be able to copy and paste some things across, right? So I will leave that turned on. I'm going to tell it to show me the developer tools and update parallel tools automatically. Going over to the hardware, CPU is going to recommend four processors. That's fine. It's going to recommend four gig of RAM. That'll be fine too for what I need. The graphics on this particular one is going to be shared with the system memory. No options there. Mouse and keyboard, again, I'm going to leave those alone. I don't share the printers, part of my isolation routine there. Network, I'm going to leave as shared network so that it just works. Sound and camera, it's entirely up to you whether you want to share those or not. I'm just going to leave them as they are. 
USB and Bluetooth. Again, I'm going to leave those. The drive space, though, now currently it's set up for a maximum of 256 gig. You will fill that up quickly. So what I'm going to do is open the advanced properties here, and I'm going to say from the properties, I'm actually, this is a one terabyte drive in, inside this Mac Mini. I'm going to actually push this up to 512, so it gives me some extra space for development tools and all of those kind of things, and hit apply. It's going to warn me, hey, don't lose power while you're doing this click continue it's actually very quick so there you go that's done already cd dvd one and two i'm going to leave those alone the boot order i'm going to leave that alone as well i'm going to go over to the security tab i'm going to leave this turned on uh leave this turned off except i am going to check again this isolate windows from mac here it's going to want to turn off a couple of other things i'm going to go yep isolate it the passwords and everything else i'm just going to leave those alone on my machine here those are fine go to the backup it's going to warn me here that my machine is set up for time machine to not back up this parallels vm that's fine as well because i back mine up separately again that choice is entirely yours that's done i'm going to close that it's going to give me a reminder here four cpus four gig of ram and the disk space that is fine i'm going to click continue and it's going to start doing the install process for me and you will notice that it is significantly quicker than actually just installing Windows, which I think is kind of funny. All right, there we go. Now it's going to start doing its reboot. So it's now going to be booting up the final setup here for Windows 10 ARM64. As it starts its final setup here of setting up my developer of my account, I should say, in the Windows install. Just want to remind you, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. You can go to peterwidham.com forward slash contact. You can go to peterwidham.com forward slash videos and find plenty more videos there. You can, of course, find them on YouTube as well. I actually now have a series of videos on this uh, using Parallels on a Mac to install various flavors of Linux and Windows. Uh, this is the latest in the series. When Windows 11 becomes available, I do plan to do one on that as well, because ironically, my PC that is only a couple of years old at the most, apparently cannot run Windows 11, so I'll probably end up running that in a VM. All right, and there we go. So it's gonna tell me installation's complete. I'm gonna click to continue. Now, because I've got the drivers and everything else, the Parallels tools installed, I can actually resize this window as you see here, like so, and it's going to rescale the desktop for me. It's going to confirm for me here on the Parallels. It's going to load up the page and says, yep, yeah, we are good to go. I, I'm just going to drag this window around here a little bit. You can see performance is really good. I've been very impressed with the performance of this ARM64 of Windows under a Parallels VM on, on the Mac. You really just cannot tell the difference between, you know, running it on a native PC and in this VM. Parallels does a fantastic job on this. So that's it. We are we are up and running here. Now, uh, from there, uh, configure it any way you want, right? I can, you know, bring up the browser here, uh, Windows File Explorer. Again, as you can see, it's very responsive. It's going to tell me down here that I do need to register it at some point. Obviously, it is an evaluation copy because I haven't put the licensing in or anything else like that yet. But other than that, there you go, we're done. We are up and running with Windows 10 on a Parallels VM. And I hope this has been helpful. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe. If you've got some requests for other videos you'd like me to see me do with Parallels for Mac, let me know and I'll see if I can do them for you. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, reach out and let me know, peterwinham.com, and I will see you in the next one.